and welcome back to Design Matters TV. I've been teaching workshops this week and students have been working into their sketchbook. We've been using all sorts of different techniques and media and tactics for getting ideas out of your head and down onto the page. And one of the techniques that I really like to use with students, especially if they perhaps haven't worked in sketchbook much before, is that of tracing. And it's great because it's such a brilliant icebreaker. If everybody says to me, oh, I can't draw, well, okay, but maybe you can trace, everyone you can trace. And it's a great way to begin to get to know your subject matter and to get some marks and lines and tone down on your page. And you don't have to worry about accuracy and proportion because you're tracing, so you know that's gonna be right. And you can simply enjoy the mark making that is associated with, with drawing without having to worry about all the nitty gritty. So let me show you an example of how it can work in a sketchbook and then I'll demonstrate the technique. But here on this spread, you can see that I've used, um, this is some tracing paper here. I do love the quality of tracing paper. I think it adds so much to your sketchbook because often you end up working just with the paper that comes in your sketchbook. I think you always have to keep an open mind and really consider adding in extra papers, extra pages. And tracing paper is a brilliant one to use because as you can see here, I've layered up several sheets and because it's translucent and you draw on each sheet, it adds such lovely dimension and depth to your sketchbook, which is, can otherwise be quite a flat 2D experience. And so putting the, the extra tracing paper in, I think really works, can make it give it a bit of an of interest and, and personality. So on this page here, I've very simply attached this on the left hand side. You can see I haven't glued it down completely. I like to allow it to lift and work as a page. But to create this drawing, all I've done is I've placed the tracing paper over my original source photograph and I've very simply traced the outlines and I've simplified down. I've traced the outlines and then I've used uh, its black Sharpie pen, so black marker pen, to lay down some tone to suggest that these um, stacked cups um, are on a dark background. You can see I'm working with a really simple, straightforward subject matter here, just um, crockery, plates and cups and saucers and that sort of thing. Just really to show you how the technique works, It'll, you can apply it to a virtually any subject matter and um, that I can think of really complicated right down to really quite simple things like these. But here in this example, you can see I've tackled it in a much more um, basic way. So I'm really trying to simplify down and get to the essence of my subject here. So I've been representing the stacked plates just with very simple lines. And that's the beauty of tracing. When you place that tracing paper over your source photograph, it immediately eliminates all the detail because you simply can't see it. And then you can just record the most important, the most essential lines that capture the essence of your subject matter. So here, just very simple strokes to suggest that they're a stack of plates and kind of all understand they are a stack of plates. And then here, going for a slightly bit more detail and thinking perhaps about contour lines. And I hope you'll agree if you're an embroiderer or a quilter, that drawing in this way, almost continuous line I've, I've drawn this with, so not lifting my pen from the paper as I've traced, that could so easily be translated into stitch, couldn't it? That could so easily be a quilting line. Um, you know, I think that could work really quite well. And then here, this example, I've not used line at all. I've just traced by using tone. So I've used, again, a black marker pen, and wherever it appeared dark, I've drawn and I've left the highlights, left the light areas. And that has worked equally well, I think, to describe the subject matter. Finally, just this little example here to show you before I demonstrate. Here I've traced again a pile of stacked up cups, would have popped my source photograph underneath and traced off those main elements. And here I'm using a combination of tone and suggestion of line. So I've drawn in a, a checkerboard background and this shading just with scribbly marks. But instead of doing a solid line to describe the cups, I've just placed them down as a dotted line. And I think that adds a little bit of variety and interest as well to the drawing. So let me show you how I would go about doing one of these. You can work from a photograph um, or a photocopy and today I've decided I want to work from a photocopy because I just want something larger scale. So all I've done, take the photograph, I've printed it out and then on my computer I've just um, photocopied it and enlarged it at the same time and printed it out. So this is just on some very basic copy paper. And then the tracing paper I've got is here and you should be able to buy this from good art shops 
um, and also some stationers as well. The quality of it does vary, the thickness of it varies. I like this quite substantial tracing paper, fairly uh, heavy weight, um, but really anything will work just to sort of get a feel for the technique and just to try it out. So use what you have. You can see when I place it over, I can see reasonably well through to the image underneath, but it does have the effect of eliminating all that tiny photographic detail that I tend to find I get bogged down in because I love all the fascinating details. This is a great way to get started with simplifying. And you can do the trace drawing with lots of different media. You can simply use a pencil if you want to. You can use, here I've got some um, artist pens, uh, fine liner and brush tip. You can use all of those. I've got some just very simple rollable black pens. I do like those. Um, and also um, a marker like this, a sort of bullet tip marker. So you can use whatever suits you really, whatever suits your style of drawing. I'm going to use this today. It's nice and bold. I know you're going to be able to see it on the camera and also the results will be nice and quick. So to go about it, all I would do is just start looking at my subject matter and start to look for the most obvious lines and shapes. And one of them really ought to be the side of this little vase that's holding the flowers. So I can simply I can put that in in a linear way. I'll just stop when I get to the apple. I might want to treat the apple in a slightly different way. So I might want to treat that in a way where I'm looking less about the line, but I'm considering how I could suggest that with tone. So instead of drawing an outline, I'm going to just look for where the apple appears to be in shadow. So look for where it's darker. And I can start to put that down with some simple little scribbly crosshatch marks. You could use little dots. Um, you know, you can use any kind of mark making for that. But this sort of cross hatching I like because I do stitch, because I, um, you know, work with quilting and with embroidery. I like to use marks in my drawing that have a quality similar to that I can achieve with stitch as well. So I kind of can visualize how I could perhaps stitch these marks. Now it's important really when you're drawing any object, obviously you're working with still life subject here, so the shadow is as important as the object so I'm definitely going to put that in. I'm going to start to just vary the mark a little bit just to help differentiate there. I mean we're working with tracing and with a marker pen so there's less scope for variation in mark as the, compared to if we were working perhaps with a pencil and that sort of, you know, the detail and the variation in tone that one can achieve with a pencil. Um, but nevertheless, with our mark making, we can do it just by varying with some, just using some tiny little dots there, just where I need it to appear dark, but not as dark. Now all the time, as long as you keep it fairly steady, all of the time you can lift your work and see what you've achieved so far. Um, obviously when it's flat down you can see through and you can see the photocopy and you see all of that level of detail there and when you lift it up sometimes it can be surprising and you think oh I haven't traced that bit you know that's actually really quite key really quite important so every so often I just lift up see what I've got see what else I need to, to trace and obviously I need to complete this apple um, very important perhaps to put the little um, stalk little stem in there That obviously needs more work and I'll come back to that. But let's return to the little bottle, the vase um, of these flowers. And I want to put that in using a very linear technique. And because when you see glass, it's so reflective and you often see lots of different contours in it. It can be really quite tricky to draw. The tracing is perfect for getting those down. And also because I've got the stems there showing through the glass and also the line of the water, Got lots of different lines doing all sorts of different things. So to use a linear tracing where we were looking for those lines and tracing, I think I can probably do this, maybe not in a completely non-stop way, but certainly in a fairly continuous line, just to get those down, those important shapes. And you can see how quick it is, because we really can be guided by what we're seeing through. The 
there's a leaf there that sort of interrupts things so we'll just have to give that a bit of space to happen come back to that one later and you can decide as you're working how much you want to trace it's great if you've got some photographs that you really want to use but there's something in them that you really don't like. So say we were working with a still life subject, you might really like the apples that are in the foreground, but you really wish that the bottle wasn't there. Well, with tracing, of course, you can just edit them out. Just don't trace. Anything you don't like, say there's a little flower up here you don't like, simply eliminate that from the tracing and it will no longer be there. It won't be important to the work. So it's great for that as well. Great for editing and selecting. So if we lift that up, we can see that hopefully you'll agree that's a fairly convincing rendition of this little glass bottle that I'm using as a vase. I'm gonna, I will put more detail into that apple just to finish describing that. But I want to show you one final way that you can work um, with this. So we've got the tonal mark making to suggest the volume of an object, and then that you could use linear tracing where you're just describing things in that way. But also you can um, describe an object by just drawing what the background is. So here with this one, the shape of this hellebore flower I think is really quite striking. And I could draw that just by outlining it, but I think if I draw up to it, I'm gonna have just as nice effect, but it's gonna give me a bit of variation. So I'm very straightforwardly going to just to make some marks. I'm going to go for dots and we'll see how that looks and um, just to start off with because they have a softer appearance compared to the cross hatching. I may put some cross hatching in as well. So we can just describe this by haloing it if you like with some tone. Now in my source photograph the flower is dark and the background is light but of course with artistic license it's perfectly viable that you can flip that out, flip that around, you know, we can have a dark background and make the subject appear lighter. And there's no reason why you have to be a slave to the reference image, you know, you can do whatever you like with it. So I'm working quite quickly here just to sort of suggest this to you and give you the idea of how it can work. Let's fill this area in here. Now what I think I can do, I think I can be quite confident that I want this to be dark into the background here. So I'm just going to fill it with dots just to soften the edge, but then I can go in and I can put in some more dramatic marks. Perhaps bring those down here. And they could be cross hatched, so we could cross them if we want darker tone. I just need to put some in here so that when I lift the tracing, we have a stem, otherwise, that's going to look rather odd. Have a look and see how that's looking. That's looking quite interesting. So you can see there I've got the three different ways of drawing happening all within this one piece. Now you might want to go for that kind of effect or you might just want to stick to one type of tracing um, for one page of your sketchbook and then explore something else in the, in the next page. Um, but combining them works just as effectively too. So I'm going to finish off this and put a bit more detail in and finish the flowers and then a bit more on the apple. But I hope that that's given you um, an insight into how you can use tracing as an alternative to straightforward observational drawing. As you can see, it's a really fast and accurate way to record your subject matter and get started in your sketchbook pages. So I hope you'll find that really useful technique that you can try. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon on DMTV. Bye for now.